Ryuji always finds something to be pissed off about. I'm so pissed off! Monokuma keeps spilling my spotlight. He's barely even in the picture. See, it, it's doing it now. Right, right now. It's like, it has the little box thing going around his face. You know what happens to stuffed animals that steal the spotlight? It's still not focusing. <laughs> what can I say? The camera loves me. Aside from that, isn't it against the rules to throw your headmaster? So enough horsing around, let's get right into the video. Let's get started. Your days are limited, Monokuma, you hear me? Going back to Persona 5, I'm covering my whole face in foundation, including my lips, because apparently anime men don't have lips. I'm now sketching out all the parts on Skull's mask. This includes the teeth, the eye sockets, the nose, and the separating panels on his metallic mask. Be mindful of the natural curves of your nose and how that'll affect your lines. With many shades of gray paint, I start filling in all the spots on Skull's mask. I wouldn't say it's 50 shades, but it's a lot. I've never seen that movie, by the way, and I don't plan to. I was staring down my reference to make sure all the colors were right. Just fill in the mask piece by piece. Depending on what part of the mask I was working on, I used different shades of gray and started shading in the mask. And in the darkest places, I just went in with straight black. And in darkest of darkest places, like my soul, I went in with black paint. And I always brag to you guys how much I love those highlights, and I'm gonna say it again. Especially on this one, because it just makes it mo look more like metal. My technique was making a lot of quick and small strokes. I highlighted the cheekbones with white eyeshadow, kind of like your normal makeup routine. Oh yeah, and some other places too. So I saw in the game that Skull's mask casts a pretty heavy shadow on his eyes, so I used pretty dark brown eyeshadow and then just went in with black. Paint on Skull's teeth with different colors of gray. I shaded around the teeth with nicely pigmented black eyeshadow from NYX, and then made small outlines around all the teeth with black paint. After all that shading, I thought the teeth were pretty dark, so I added highlights to start building up the highlights to bring it back to life. We're almost done with the mask, that is. I just started adding little details to finish it up. It's the little things that matter, you know. 
I used white paint which turned into gray to make the screws and bolts in all the corners on Skull's mask. I used a fine brush and outlined all the screws and highlighted them as well. With dark brown and black eyeshadow, I shaded under the mask. Oh yeah, you know that giant skin-colored hole in the middle of your face? Color that with black. At this point, you can just fine-tune and perfect everything on your face. I roughly started painting on Skull's awesomely awesome red scarf. If you're quick enough, I used a black paint which turned into a dark red to shade the whole scarf. If the background paint already dried up, you can mix up yourself a little concoction of dark red paint. Or you could say, screw it, I'm using black paint. You could do whatever you want. Your scarf will look awesome no matter what. With white paint, I started building up the brightest parts of the scarf. Once your dark red paint has dried up, I darkened it even more with more black paint. I used the same steps with the other parts of the scarf, except the folds are in different directions. Cover the rest of the existence of your body with medium gray paint. Yeah, we'll go with that. I started shading and making the folding lines on Skull's awesome leather jacket. Again, I paid a lot of attention to my reference to make sure this, the leather jacket looked right. And Skull had these cool patches on his shoulders, so I used white paint, which turned into a light gray, to make those. You can outline around the shoulder pads just to make them stand out, but we'll be shading it later. Continue to make all the fold lines on his leather jacket. NYX has a product called Primal Colors Eyeshadow. I used that black and it came in real handy when shading the leather jacket. No other eyeshadow I had was strong enough to cover the already black leather jacket. I dabbed on some lightly watered down white paint. This will A, highlight your leather jacket, and two, give it more of a leathery look. And I dabbed this white paint on anywhere that wasn't shaded. And on certain parts of the jackets and the shoulder pads, you can make the brightest highlights. Using the same steps as I used on the screws, I painted on the button. I painted little dots, those are like the little attachments that would keep the shoulder pads on the rest of the jacket. 
pause this if you want, but this is the shape of the collar that goes on Skull's jacket. It's made out of cardstock paper. Make two of those. Paint both sides of those black and attach it to the top of your jacket with any adhesive you prefer. I use Tarte's eyelash glue and boy I'll tell you that stuff is glue for your face. Flip the ends out. Last step is to line your eyeballs. And to any cosplayers out there, I recommend not bringing a steel pipe in Comic Con because you're not going to get through the front door. <laughs> Bring something styrofoam, but this, this is a real pipe. <laughs> I've hurt myself several times on this thing and a few stuffed animal casualties. You're not even in this game, Monokuma. It feels mighty good just carrying it around. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. Please hit that like button if you enjoyed it and smack that subscribe button and join the horsepower. And I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.